Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. It's time for another question the narrative video. I actually was torn between this topic and another one and this one won out. So today we're going to be talking about what I'm calling the Genesis 1 reset. Now I had mentioned some biblical resets in one of my last videos. I think it may have been the rabbit, the mother of all rabbit holes video, but Basically, the Genesis 1 reset would have taken place right at the end of the pre-Adamic civilization, which is, it's very controversial in the Christian community. There are a lot of people who believe there was a pre-Adamic civilization and others who believe that there was not. Um, but anyway, the reason that I would call it a reset, if that were the case, is that something would have happened to pretty much obliterate the earth before moving on to verse two. So let's just read this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Now, some people just take this as it is, but there are others who say that if you look at the Hebrew translation, the word, the Hebrew word for was could also be translated as became. And instead it would be in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth became formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So the earth became formless and empty. So he created it and then it became formless and empty. Now, another interesting thing is that the Hebrew word for created can also be, I think it's bara. Um, and it can be translated to mean shaped. So in the beginning, God shaped the heavens and the earth. But then down in verse two, it says, now the earth was formless. So to me, you know, that doesn't make sense because if he shaped it, it would not then be formless if this was all happening in one, you know, one smooth line with nothing in between. Now the word for formless, which is tohu, can mean without form. It can also mean confusion though. And I think that that's very interesting because our God is not a God of confusion. He is a God of order. So to me, if we look at it as was not being was, but being became to me, it means that in the beginning, God shaped the heavens and the earth. Now the earth became formless and empty. Something happened. The question is what happened? And that is where my idea of the reset comes in. Now, Someone in the comments actually brought this up to me, and I want to say thank you to her for doing that, um, about how the word replenish is used in Genesis 1, And that like went right over my head. I didn't even remember that, but it says, and God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Replenish. That means to fill back up again. That means that something had already been there and that they're supposed to put things back or to fill it up again. So that's very interesting, isn't it? All right. Now, there's a lot of speculation about who would have been there during the pre-Adamic period. If you look into the, the secular world, you know, you'll hear all kinds of theories like they were aliens and which I don't believe they were aliens. Um, and they will also say, so there are some people who say the pre-Adamic time is when the the cavemen were here so that they can kind of, you know, work evolution into the Bible, which I don't think works out because first of all, we're going to look at some evidence of what seems to be technologically advanced ancient civilizations. And obviously a caveman would not be technologically advanced. Um, so to me that, that does not work out. And what, it, what the Bible tells us though, and, and well, the Bible gives us clues that it, that it may have been the, the fallen angels, because remember that when they fell, they had to fall somewhere. And so the theory is that when they fell, that they, whatever the book of Ecclesiastes tells us that there is nothing new under the sun. And I think that it's important to remember that because if the fallen angels came here in Genesis six and then wreaked havoc and corrupted the human genome, corrupted the animals, did all kinds of wicked things, you can only imagine that if they were there in a pre-Adamic time period, that they would have been doing the same thing. And they might have done something to, call, to, to bring God's wrath on them. 
and that would have caused some sort of catastrophe, aka a reset. But let's look, just look really quickly at Genesis 6, 4. There were giants in the earth on the, in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Now, let's look at the word old here. The Hebrew word for old is olam. And what olam means is antiquity. So this verse happened before the Bible. So the earth was still pretty new. You know, Adam and Eve had not been very many generations before this. So what could have been considered to be men, mighty men from antiquity? And so the question is, could it have been um, the, the angelic race who had been there, or as Timothy Alberino calls them, the elder race that had been there since since before Adam and Eve in the pre-Adamic time before what I will call the biblical or the, not the biblical, the Genesis one reset. So if that were the case that there had been a pre-Adamic civilization and that something catastrophic happened that caused the earth to go from being shaped to being formless and void, something would have had to happen and there should be some sort of geological and possibly archaeological evidence for this. And I believe that there is geological evidence for what could possibly be this all over the world. Now that is not what the, the mainstream community will tell us. They will give us their, their mainstream ideas on what caused these things and they could be correct. But, you know, the fact is, is that they can't take a time machine back in time. So they don't know 100%. Even though they, they bring these ideas forward as if they know the answers 100%, they don't. They are speculating. And so that is what I am doing. I am speculating that this could have been caused by some sort of global catastrophe brought on by the wrath of God. So what we see here as a crater, the science community will tell us, happened from a meteorite. But even before I started thinking about this, this pre-Adamic reset, I, I thought that maybe the, the craters that we see could have been formed from gases bubbling up from under the earth. And then, you know, a bubble forms, it pops, and then you have that indentation. Um, the meteorite thing just never really made sense to me because we, we don't really see that happening now, yet we will we'll see that they're all over the earth. So I think that some of the things that we're told about these geological formations, we take them as 100% fact. But, you know, the fact remains that we don't really know. So we're just going to look at some more um, evidence that I found that could possibly um, be, let's call it circumstantial evidence for a, a catastrophe. So here we are in California, and I'm just gonna pay attention to some of what we're calling grid patterns. And things like these. Now this actually looks relatively new, or at least like, like people went over it or like it was in use for something. But my, my question is, what would something like this be used for? I know that people will say that there are roads. I know there's roads, um, but this doesn't look like it would be roads to me. It doesn't really lead anywhere. It's just kind of in a box with geometrical patterns and we'll find this everywhere. Now, yes, they did. And you'll see underneath these neighborhoods that they have the same grid patterns underneath them. So were they created by the people who put the neighborhoods there? Or were the neighborhoods placed on these grid patterns that were already there? Because from what we can see, there are some there that look very, very old. And again, not, not necessarily what you would typically call roads. Because like this, this, this almost reminds me of bricks. I know that it's not bricks, but I'm just saying that it just doesn't look like it would be regular roads. And here we have here the same thing. We've got these grids going on. And these are things that you can find all over the world. And I want you to just keep in mind these feathery things coming out because we're going to be talking about them in a little bit. But I found this. This is about Africa and it's called African Nazca Unexplained Sites Discovered in Africa. 
Now, most people have heard of the Nazca lines. Um, I always enjoyed looking at them when I was younger. And so what they are is there's a lot of shapes. In Nazca, they have monkeys and hummingbirds and other kinds of birds. Um, I don't even remember specifically. I know there's a spider. And then they have these really long lines that a lot of times people call runways. And if you look at them, they really do look like they would have had to have been done with some sort of advanced technology, like some sort of advanced civilization would have had to have created these. And remember that, how long have these been around? How long have they lasted? So if we go back to the ones in Africa now, I want you to keep in mind the ones that I just showed you from California because what you're seeing here is a grid-like pattern. And I want you to keep an eye out for these because you're gonna see those a lot all over the world, just as with the grid patterns. See, we still have more of those. Here's a really great example of them. I, you know, I, and I brought you here to show you the grid patterns, but these, I believe, are also very important and they might tell a part of the story. Now, I'm just gonna tell you right away what I believe they are. I believe that they are what is called Lichtenberg figures. And we'll go over that in just a minute. I just wanted to show you the rest. Oops. The rest of this looks like a crater here. We've got some more of the grid patterns. We've got some more of these Lichtenberg figures. Okay, so here I came across this. And if anyone is from California and knows what any of this stuff is, can shed light, please let me know because, you know, I don't know. I'm just kind of looking at this from Google Earth and speculating, thinking this could possibly be ruins. Now, could it just be something recent and just maybe was demolished? Yeah, it's possible. But, you know, I'm just looking at the area around here and all the grid patterns. And this looks like it could have possibly been a site of something as well. Um, and I, I don't know. There's, and as we can see, we're going to see more Lichtenberg figures coming up. They're kind of, yeah, you'll, you, you will see those everywhere. Now this, this I'm not saying has anything to do with the, the Genesis 1 reset. Um, I'm just, I'm showing this because I'm fascinated by this. Does anyone know what these are? If you're from California, this is near Edwards Air Force Base. And I'm seeing like all these circles here and also these. And I, I would really love to know what they are. I just, I don't know. mystery for another day, right? Unless somebody actually knows what they are and then there's like a really mundane <laughs> explanation for them. But yeah, this is something else that you, those circles are all over the place, like all over California, at least I've been seeing them. Okay, moving on, let's look at some more Lichtenberg figures. I know you're probably still wondering what's Lichtenberg figures, but my point right now, see, here's more of those circles too. Um, but yeah, it's just to show you that these they're, they're everywhere. They're all over the place. I've got one here too. Okay, so we see them kind of feathering out here. All right. Now, now we're gonna get to the Ubahebe crater. I don't know if I said that right, but I tried. Um, now, again, we already talked about craters and what I believe it possibly could have come from. Um, it could have been from the earth being pummeled with something or some sort of gas come seeping up from underneath the surface. Or it could be meteor meteorites, like they say. I think that's the least likely, but it could be. But here's what I really wanted to show you here. This is a massive example of Lichtenberg figures. Now's where I'm going to tell you what they are. A Lichtenberg figure is a branching electric discharge that sometimes appears on the surface or in the interior of insulating materials. Lichtenberg figures are often associated with the progressive deterioration of high voltage components and equipment. 
So that's what it is definition wise. Now let's look at some pictures of them. These are Lichtenberg figures. They are patterns created from electricity, from lightning. Now, I want you to take a look at this. Now we're going to go back. Do you see why I'm calling them Lichtenberg figures? Are they really Lichtenberg figures? I don't know. But I think that the resemblance between the two or the similarities are uncanny. So my question is, what we are normally told happens from like water erosion, or sometimes they might say that they come from because these these craters came from old old volcanoes and you know, like magma flow and things like that. Could could they have been formed from major electrical storms that would have happened during a catastrophic destruction of the earth. Something to think about. The last thing on Google Earth that I want to show you is this here. It's right here by the Sedan Crater and the Teapot Crater. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. These are all craters. This whole area was pummeled by craters, not by craters. They were pummeled by something. So to me, this kind of puts my idea of the gas thing, it puts that to rest. This, this, this looks like it was attacked. And if you look closely, you will see what looks to be some of those old grid-like patterns underneath here. Could there have been a civilization here that was subject to destruction by not only electrical storms, we still see these Lichtenberg figures coming in through here. There's a very prominent crater right inside of a circle. I don't know what that circle is. If that's something new or old, I have no idea. Could it be a road? Sure, it could be, but it's just interesting. They will put it in a perfect circle. But really, what happened here? Is this the evidence that we've been looking for, for some sort of event that would have caused the earth to become formless and void and would have caused the need for God to um, recreate the earth and to bring in Adam and Eve? I, I think it's a valid question. So if you're so inclined that you want to look up some more craters in North America, maybe on Google Earth or all over the world you can, but these are just in North America. Look at all of these just in North America. So I would encourage you, you know, if you're ever bored, go on Google Earth, look these up, see, see what you see around it. See if it looks like there's old grid patterns underneath it. Look for the Lichtenberg figures. What else can you dig up? There's a lot of places to look. And again, this is only North America. <laughs> and these, these things can be found worldwide. Now let's just move on to possible evidence of ancient civilizations. And we, we can't possibly know for sure because we, there's just no way to tell what reset things would have happened in. But what we do know, what we, at least what we're told, is that the lower half, the bottom part of the Sphinx, was actually created by an older civilization and that the Egyptians just put the head on it. And that is something that is actually very common, that um, newer civilizations will build on top of older civilizations. And we'll find that a lot, even if I talk, well, I will, <laughs> when I talk more about mud flood evidence in the, in the future, you're going to see that pattern as well, that sometimes things have maybe three layers of civilizations where one builds on top of another. And so, yes, this, the, the lower part of the Sphinx was built by an older civilization. And really, um, when it comes to the pyramids, a lot of people believe that they were antediluvian, that they were here before the, the flood. Um, and that the Egyptians did not build them because, frankly, they just did not have the technology to do it. Um, but there are Steve Quayle, um, in his book, Unearthing the Cloud Eaters, he believes that they could have been here 
in that pre-Adamic civilization and that they really could be that old. And if you look at these pyramids, this is how they're usually found. They usually are in rubble. Um, and so, yeah, you, you could speculate that it was purposely destroyed. Here's another example. And the interesting thing, at least about the Great Pyramid, is that, you know, there's evidence that it couldn't have been built by the Egyptians. For, the, for example, the archaeologists say that not only were there never, was there never a single mummy found in the Great Pyramid, but there's no hieroglyphics in the Great Pyramid. So there's very little evidence that they were at, that it was actually created by the Egyptians. Now, could they have created some pyramids kind of as a replica to, to that one? Possibly, but for sure, the Great Pyramid is, is definitely in question. And here we have, this is very interesting. This is in West Virginia. It's called Waffle Rock. Um, scientists are really baffled by this because these lines are actually cut into the stone and they said there was laser precision used and the stone is said to be extremely old. They actually found it while they were excavating an area and they just happened to come across this. And so the question is, what sort of civilization would have the technology to, to do something like this? Is this evidence? It is certainly evidence for an ancient advanced civilization from when I don't know for sure, but the question is there. Who created this and where did they get that, that, that intelligence from? Um, now, I really, one thing that I want to say is that I really have to be careful. There are so many people who will attribute the whole idea of the pre-Adamic civilization to ancient aliens, and I do not follow that line of thinking at all. Um, I believe that there is enough evidence that if there were a pre-Adamic civilization, that it would have been the fallen angels who, who, well, I was going to say fallen angels who fell, but that's kind of redundant, isn't it? But yeah, it would have been the angels who fell because they had to fall somewhere. And the idea that aliens came and seeded the earth and everything, I, I really think that that is a lie from, from Satan. It is, it is a deception to try to pull people away from God. And I'm going to tell you right now that the only place where you can 100% find the truth is in the word of God. And I know that people will say, but the Bible could have been changed because everything else was changed. But my, my, my idea on that is that Jesus is the word of God. So Jesus cannot be corrupted. And in addition, if God was going to write a love letter to um, his children, don't you think that if anyone would have the power to make sure that it was incorrupt, that it was uncorrupted, that it would be God? So besides that, you know, there's, there's evidence and just things that I've experienced in my own life and general revelation. But really, those are the two things that stand out to me the most. Jesus is incorruptible and God would have the power above anyone else to make sure that his word was not corrupted so that we would not be deceived. So I really wanted to, because I know that people are always going to talk about that in the comments. And really, I won't debate that. That's something that I will not debate because that is something, you know, I didn't become a Christian as a child. I, I, I dug through everything. I, I was a seeker for many years. So I've been through that already. And um, really, that's, that's the most important thing for us to remember is that if there is anything that we can trust in the world, 100%. It's God's word. We can't trust in man 100%. In fact, most of the things that we're told by man are not true. And the only truth can come from God. And it's important that we remember that. Anyway, that's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one over on Instagram because YouTube disables my comments. It, actually, they don't anymore. I'm so used to saying that. I say that like automatically and it's 1116 at night and this is like my fourth try of doing this. So I'm going to say you can leave a comment here or on Instagram if you want to or on my YouTube community page. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And I hope you have a great day.